Tell me about her again. Why? Because you like to remember her. She was beautiful. No. Close your eyes and remember her. Why do we close our eyes when we're trying to remember something? And does it actually help? Let's find out. It's something of a cliche. You attempt to withdraw some elusive detail from the memory vault and what do you do? Why well, you close your eyes, of course. But does this actually help us recall the past? Or is it merely a useless mannerism picked up from friends, family members, and the muse of popular media? According to a 2015 University of Surrey study published in the journal Legal and Criminology Psychology, closing your eyes to incoming visual stimuli can boost memory recall by a whopping 23%. As you can tell by that journal title, the primary focus here pertains to eyewitness accounts in a criminal investigation. The researchers wanted to know if police investigators would benefit from suggesting eyewitnesses close their eyes when recalling the details of a crime. Here's how the 178-person study broke down across two experiments. In the first experiment, participants watched video footage of a crime. Afterwards, some participants were asked to close their eyes while recalling certain visual details from the film, while others were not. Additionally, portions of both groups were allowed to build a rapport with the investigator asking the questions. The results? Eyes closed participants answered 23% more questions correctly. While rapport also bumped recall, eyes closed recall was effective regardless. A second experiment also included questions about auditory details in a crime film. Again, closed eye recall worked regardless of rapport. That's not to say a little detective bedside manner isn't important. Lead author Dr. Robert Nash is quick to point out that participants were more comfortable closing their eyes for recall when a certain level of rapport was established. All of this lines up with a 2011 study from the University of York Department of Psychology, which found evidence to support both key hypotheses on closed eye recall. The cognitive load hypothesis, which predicts it's a matter of freeing up cognitive resources for the task of remembering, as well as the modality-specific interface hypothesis, which predicts it's all about reducing visual interference. I mean, you wouldn't want to accidentally Kaiser so say your story, would you? It's all about turning off incoming audio-visual distractions to focus on memories of the same sensory stimuli. Plus, you need your brain's visual recollection network to make sense of what you saw in the past, so it helps to lighten its incoming workload. Of course, there's no guaranteeing that that resulting memory is actually factual. Our recollections are far from solid, unbiased accounts. Each memory is an ephemeral, malleable package of information, susceptible to corruption from several different directions. Misattribution, bias, and suggestibility are just a few of the ways memories can go bad, especially especially in an interrogation environment. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out these three videos as well. And don't forget to visit us at StuffToBlowYourMind.com. Because in the same way that this memory is susceptible to change when I take it out of the memory box, it's also susceptible to deletion. In fact, some of the greatest Greek and Roman minds in history relied on their sharp mental memories in order to deliver exceptional speeches without the aid of notes. Needless to say, our memories are not set in stone. We have several different types of memories working at once, and there are a number of ways that they can screw up on us. 